Your shaker is not a detonator. Don't be scared. None of that stuff. I'm Anthony Baker, and many of you may know me as Professor Baker because I've taught many of you how to make drinks at home. I've been in this industry for 20 years. Can you believe? Don't be fooled by the baby face. And today I'm gonna teach you how to make some simple three ingredient cocktails that everyone should know how to make. A daiquiri, an old fashioned, a gimlet, a negroni. And then we're gonna end with a Tommy's margarita. We're gonna make a daiquiri. And this is three easy ingredients. And the trick is to find balance between all three of them. So let's do this. So the first ingredient you wanna start off with is your simple syrup. And we're gonna measure out three quarters of an ounce per person and pour that into the shaker. And then the next ingredient we're gonna go to is our fresh lime juice. And yes, I've squeezed this lime juice myself. I did it while I was sober. A full ounce. You always wanna put less simple syrup than lime juice because rum has sweetness to it. And so you wanna kinda of counteract that sweetness. Let's bring it all home. Let's go to our light rum. Two full ounces per person. Okay, and two. The great thing about daiquiris is it's medicine. They use this on the Navy ships to prevent scurvy. If you wanna use a rocks glass or a martini glass, you are more than welcome to use that, but I wanna get me a nice little fancy coupe. Filling up your whole shaker with ice, that's a myth. You really just need a few ice cubes. So now, let's shake this up. Back and forth for 10 seconds. Woo, woo. Are your hands cold? Because I know mine are. So you wanna strain that right into the glass. Okay. We still got one more very important thing to do, and that's the garnish. Let's just say you find this drink too sweet. You can easily squeeze some lime into there that would negate the sweetness. It will tame it down. Let's taste this. Ugh, that is just glorious. If you ever wanna have like an alternative version of this, switch out the simple syrup and replace it with some Demerara syrup. And then place out the light rum, replace it with dark rum, and then put a few dashes of Angostura bitters in there and then you have yourself a good autumn style daiquiri. Now we're gonna go to the old fashioned, but like the old, old fashioned. None of that muddled orange and cherry and sugar cube, none of that stuff. It's so nostalgic. Brings me back to the early 1800s. And although I wasn't even born during that time, it still brings me back. You had two types of guys in the bar. Blue collar guys used to just go to the bar and say, let me just get whiskey straight, I don't care. But then you had the white collar guys like me, you know, the pretty boys. And they used to go to the bar and say, listen, bartender, this whiskey is a little bit terrible. The whiskey we have today is mounds better than what they had back then. It was bootleg whiskey. And bootleggers don't have time to age whiskey. So what did they do to make their whiskey brown? They put um, iodine in it, tobacco in it, and they even put dead carcass in it, just to set, so that way it can be a little bit sweeter. And the bartender did not have much. He had sugar, bitters, and he had water and ice. So we're gonna make that type of old fashioned. You only need a short, elegant glass. The first ingredient we're gonna go with is maple syrup. Back in the day, the bartenders used to take a clump of sugar, douse it with water, and then they used to muddle it into a syrup. So instead, use maple syrup, and you just wanna do a quarter ounce. So now we're gonna add bitters to this. One, two, three. So now let's go to our bourbon. I'm gonna to use Town Branch bourbon, and it's got this really nice dryness to it, almost like a rye, but it still has like this maltiness to it as well. Use two and a quarter ounces. That's a really nice round measurement. So let's add some ice to this, shall we? Stir it for 10 seconds. Alcohol is the most efficient fluid at melting ice. There's one last step and that is the orange peel. What the bartender used to do is release the orange oils onto the surface, and then he used to even rub the rim of the glass and just gently place it right on top of the ice. Perfection. Now we're gonna move on to the gimlet, basically the gin version of a daiquiri. This is usually a two ingredient cocktail. It's usually just gin and lime cordial. Lime cordial is just lime juice mixed with sugar. And so that's why we're gonna use a different type of syrup to make our own lime cordial. 
Simple syrup, for example, is one cup of sugar and one cup of water. But rich simple syrup is two cups of sugar and one cup of water. And we're gonna measure half ounce per person. We need to put double the amount of lime juice so that way we can achieve balance. One ounce per person. We're gonna go to our gin. And I love to use Old Tom gin. It's not like Hendrix and it's not like Tangeray. Old Tom is referring to gins that's been slightly sweet because people used to make gin in their bathtubs. That's gross. And so in order to sell it effectively, they had to sweeten it. So would you even drink gin that was made in someone's bathtub? Leave your answer in the comments. <laughs> Let's do two ounces per person. Just gonna put a few ice cubes into it. Let's take our Nick and Nora glass. Nick and Nora was a couple from like the 1930s or something and they used to make drink their martinis out of these small martini glasses. And so I felt like today was the appropriate day to actually use this. 10 seconds, back and forth. <sighs> Directly into our Nick and Nora glass. We don't really need to put a, a lime wedge on here. What we can do is a lime twist for aroma and for aesthetics. That's all it's for. I'm a gin guy, and so I make it a personal um, ritual every day to take like a half a shot of gin. Did you know the juniper in gin helps with your kidneys and your bladders? Now that's not to say go out and chug a whole bottle of gin. That's just to say that gin is like a healthy spirit, and that's why I love gin so much. We are going to be making a Negroni, probably the most famous three ingredient cocktail. It's got your sweetness from the sweet vermouth, it's got nice bitterness from the Campari, a little spirituous from the gin, but it's also got like a nice orange flavor too. Usually they do equal parts, but we're gonna up the ante on the gin because we're actually gonna be using a special gin today. So let's start off with our sweet vermouth and we're gonna do one ounce as you've seen with our first two cocktails, to balance out sweetness, we used citrus, but there's another thing that you can use to balance out sweetness, bitter. So we're gonna do one ounce of Campari. The last old Tom gin that we had was crystal clear, like vodka. Only thing they did was just throw some sugar in it. But this one, it's a special kind of old Tom gin because they sweeten it with honey. But then on top of that, they age it in a wooden barrel, which is where it gets its brown color. So we're gonna do one and a quarter ounce. Just a little extra. The only thing we need now is to temper it and to dilute it. If you don't have a big ice rock, you could just fill up your glass with ice. And we need to stir it for 10 seconds. Every Negroni deserves an orange slice because if this gets a little too strong for you from the bitterness, you could always take your orange slice and chew on it. And ideally, you wanna lay that right on side of the glass. Perfect, nicely balanced. Nice balance of bitter, nice balance of sweet, and nice balance of gin. Many of you do not like Negronis because of the harshness of the Campari. Negronis are like being in a boxing match. You get a left hook of sweet vermouth, you get a right hook of Campari, and then you get an uppercut of gin, you know? And it's just too much too soon. What you wanna do is this. You wanna ease the proportions, but also you wanna replace the Campari with something called Capaletti. Capaletti is like a lighter version of Campari. We are about to make Tommy's Margarita. Now, Tommy's Margarita was created by, not Tommy, believe it or not, it was created by a guy named Juan, and he was working at a Mexican restaurant called Tommy's, located in Los Angeles. And he had the idea that a, a margarita should be all Mexican ingredients. And so what did he do? He said, no, 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 no. Cointreau is not a Mexican ingredient, so take it out and put more agave in there. So let's make this, shall we? You need a cocktail shaker for this one. The first ingredient is agave nectar, half ounce. Not only does it sweeten the cocktail, but it enriches the tequila because it comes from the same plant. Let's go to our fresh lime juice, one ounce per person. So now the only thing we need to do is add some amazing tequila to go with it. Two ounces per person. Take yourself a nice short rocks margarita glass or whatever glass you're gonna use. Take it and make sure you put ice in here before you shake. Shake it as hard as you can for 10 seconds, okay? That's all we need to do. 
we want to put a garnish on here that's more for the aesthetics. And that's why we're going to use a lime wheel. This is insane. There you have it. You have five amazing three ingredient cocktails that are great all year long. Just make sure you use those proportions because I guarantee you will not regret it. Is there something you think that we missed here? Let us know. And also remember, mixology is very easy at home. Only thing you have to do is worry about why everything goes into a cocktail. Once you start asking yourself that question, you're on the road to mixology.